Okay, I want to talk about decimals and decimal places. We've already talked about whole numbers and decimals are exactly the same in terms of the uh, names of the places, but going in opposite directions. So what I mean is, if we start at the ones column, you know going to the left, we have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the ten thousands, and so on. We did that the other day. Well, going to the right, behind the ones column is a decimal. So in every number, if you do not see a decimal, the number is at the back of the number. And the decimal will be represented by the word and if we're using words to write this number down. Beyond the and, beyond the decimal, the next place to the right is not another ones column, it's a tenths with a T-H-S. And if you'll think about it, if you're thinking money, the very first place behind the decimal is your dimes. Like how many dimes do you have? And then the next place is how many pennies do you have? Well, that is known, the first place is the tenths, T-E-N-T-H-S. The next place to the right is the hundredths, H-U-N-D-R-E-D, -E just spelled like normal hundred, but then with a THS on the end of it. So that would be your dimes and your pennies column. Well, beyond the hundredths column, then it's gonna count just like they did going to the left. Now we've got the thousandths with the THS on the end, the ten thousandths with the THS, the hundred thousandths with the THS, and then the millions and the 10 millions and the bill and the hundred millions and then the billions and so on. But the only way that you know that we are behind the decimal is the THS that is on the end of the word. The other thing that's so important when we get to like the 10 thousandths, if you see it written in words, the word 10 is spelled out T E N. Then you have a hyphen. Then you have the word thousand with a THS stuck on the end of that word. So the hyphenated word tells you that you're in the 10 thousandths column. So let's go down here and we're looking at the decimal. And right now I have the number 0 0.924. So 0 0.924, how would we say that in words? Well, first of all, you just look at the number as if no decimal is involved and just repeat 924. Well, that would be 924. So that's the first part written in words. And that's what I have here under the words column. 920 hyphen four. That's just the number that I've seen. But now we need to let us know that this is actually not 924 whole things. It's 924 pieces out of some amount. Well, we need to figure out what place is the four sitting in. Well, the nine is sitting in the tenths, the two is sitting in the hundredths, and therefore the four is setting, sitting in the thousandths. And so that's why we put that word on the end of this. So our word, our, our, this number written in words would be 924 thousandths with the THS on the end of that. Then we could also write this same decimal in a fractional form. We would have 924 in the numerator, that is on the top of the fraction bar. Then we would have the fraction bar. And because the number four was sitting in the thousandths column, the third place over to the right, we put the number 1000 on the bottom. So really to go from a decimal to a fraction is extremely easy because you're gonna write whatever number you see behind the decimal, that's gonna be your numerator of the fraction. Then you are going to, in the base of the fraction, the denominator, you're gonna put down the number one. You will always have a grouping of either a 10 or a 100 or a 1,000 or a million or a 100 billion you're going to have the number one, and then you're gonna have a certain number of zeros based on how many digits were in your decimal to begin with. 
So if I look at my original decimal, which was 0.924, I have three decimal places. So I put 924 in the numerator of the fraction, I draw the fraction bar, and then in the denominator, I write the number one. And because there were three digits in that number 924, I put three zeros. So then it's very easy to read the fraction of 924 over 1,000. So we'll go down and we'll look at another fraction. Here's a fraction of 31 over 100. We could say it as 31 one hundredths, and that's how we would actually write it in words. But at the moment, I want to take the 31 off of the numerator, put an equal sign, and just write 31 down on the piece of paper next to it. I'm making this look like a whole number at the moment before I put any decimals in. If I just wrote the, originally my problem 31 hundredths is telling me I have 31 pieces of something that was cut into 100 pieces. So I really don't have very much of it. I have almost a third of it. So then I go over and if I take the 31 off of the numerator and just write it as a whole number, I'd be telling you I have 31 whole things. I do not have 31 whole things. I only have part of one whole thing. So now, because I had two zeros in the denominator, two zeros in that number 100, that is telling me how many decimal places I need to mark off. Well, I told you when you don't see it, that the decimal is always behind the, the number. So in this whole number 31, there is a imaginary decimal sitting behind the one, to the right of the one. So I need to mark off two places to the left to account for the two zeros in this number to uh, the fraction, 31 over 100. And when I do that, I then get the new decimal equivalent of 0 0.31. And if you understand money, you know that that's 31 cents. And that, what that's telling you is I have 31 pennies out of 100 pennies, which would have been a dollar. So I've got 31 pieces of a dollar. Now here's another large fraction, or it seems large. It's 1,654 in the numerator. And in the denominator, I have the number 10,000. Well, the number 10,000, I want you to immediately think how many zeros are involved. There are four zeros involved. That's telling me how many decimal places I am going to have to mark off. So I take my 1654 and I write it down. I go to the back of that number, I'm to the right of the number four, and I start marking off four decimal places moving to the left. So that puts me putting my decimal in front of the number one. So now my official decimal equivalent is 0 0.1. 1654, which if we were to do it in words, it would be 1,654, excuse me, I did not say that right, 1,654 ten thousandths would be the way I'd write that. And the 10 would be hyphenated to the word thousandths because that is the place. It's so, then we go down and we've got a word, um, that we need to turn into a fraction and then a decimal. A lot of times I'll just say, turn these words into the decimal equivalent. Well, it'll be much easier for you to turn it into a fractional equivalent first, and then take the next step to turn it into a decimal. So I'll show you what I mean. We have 500 and two ten thousandths. Well, the word and is the decimal. So the beginning part, 500, that's the whole number 500. So go ahead and just write that as a whole number. Then because we have the and, there is an understood decimal behind this 500. Then the part that comes behind it is going to be written in fractional form. And I have two ten thousandths. So I want you to put the two in the numerator and the 10,000 in the denominator. And now, because you've got it in fractional form, you can see that this two needs to sit way over here toward the right, toward the last of the four zeros of the 10,000. And I'm gonna have to backfill with zeros to get to my decimal place. So I put my two down, and now I am going to mark off, going to the left, one, two, 
three, four places. And then I've got to fill in with missing zeros. So I'm actually putting in three zeros in front of that number two. So my new answer is 500 point zero, 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 two.